<laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is this is our uh, this is our uh, first show back on the air since the tragic events last week here in New York City. And I want to begin, I said this just before we started taping, but I want to begin by thanking a studio audience that would come here and, and support New York and the show and everything, just the situation in general for being here. I think it's tremendous that you could be here. I also want to say that that it's, it's not my place, it's not what I do to put this in perspective. It's not what I do to try and help us understand what's happened in the last week. I, uh, I make a living acting like an ass, generally. And uh, for those of you who've seen the show, you know that that's sadly true. And no one's looking to me to put this in perspective. But what I do need to do, what's very important to do, is to tell you that we are a show that's done out of New York. We are a show that's done here in New York City. There are about 104 people that work on this show. And they live here, and they work here, and all of us have been affected by what's happened here. And last Friday, we got together and we tried to decide, can we go and do shows now? When can we go do shows? Can we start on Tuesday doing a show? And I have to be very honest with you, a lot of people felt that we shouldn't that we couldn't, that it wasn't the right time. And yet, I felt strongly, and a bunch of people on the staff felt strongly that we have to get back to work. It's what all of us have to do. And we also have to come together a little bit, because this show, Late Night with Conan O'Brien, is, is not me. This show is a lot of people that work very hard, that, that live in this city. And we, uh, we need to come together and we need to do our job. I will be very honest with you. I have no idea how to do what we've been doing tonight. I have no idea how to do it tomorrow. I have no idea how to do it the rest of the week. I know I have no idea how we're going to get back to doing this again. And that's how we all feel. I've made a career of getting in way over my head. And I have never, ever felt more unsure or more at a loss than I do tonight. I will not lie to you. I, I, I don't exactly know how we're going to do this. But we're going to try to do it. That's what I've decided we're, we're going to try and do. That's what Max and the band have decided. That's what the writers have decided to try and do. That's what a lot of people here feel is the right thing to do, is to get back and to just try our hardest to move forward and to make sense of our lives at a time when absolutely, absolutely nothing makes sense. I... Uh, don't talk about these things on the air, but I was raised Catholic, and uh, today I did what I haven't done since the first show when I went on the air on September 13th. I, I, I so felt like I needed help and that I needed somebody or I needed something to help me that I went across the street to St. Patrick's Cathedral and I sat there for a little bit, and I'm very glad I did, and it has nothing to do with what my religion is or what anybody's religion is. It has nothing to do with any of that. 
I sat in there, and it's this beautiful, beautiful building. And I don't care what faith you are, I don't care what you believe, it's just this beautiful building. And it made me realize that as much as we've lost this week, here I'm sitting in this amazing structure. This city still has so much. It's an amazing city. I'm not from here, I'm from Boston. I grew up fearing this city. <laughs> I grew up, frankly, hating this city. Uh, and I've been here for eight years, and I sat here and I realized we have lost so much, and again, I am not going to attempt to tell you how much New York has lost. But sitting there, I thought this is such a beautiful place. We still have so much. And we have to thank God, and by I mean God, it can mean whatever that means to you. We just have to thank God for what we still have and what we still can do. I, uh, I also know that if I say anything else tonight, I know that we have a young audience that watches us. And I just know that over the years from the people that have come up to me and, and talked to me about the show and, and, and expressed enthusiasm. Uh, there are a lot of young people watching, and there's a lot of cynicism among young people. And if I could say anything tonight to any of the people that watch our little show at 12.30 at night who are young, I would ask you not to be cynical. I would ask you to accept that as horrible and senseless as this thing is, that, that there is goodness in people, that collectively we're an amazing country, that we've done a lot. I've had this guy on my desk. He, I got, someone gave me this Eisenhower mug. Robert Smigel gave me this Eisenhower mug. And it's been on my desk. Uh, it was on my desk at Sarnet Live. It was on my desk at The Simpsons. I've always kept it here on the show since day one. It's been here for every show. We're an amazing country. There is a lot of goodness in the world. And I would ask young people to not give in to cynicism in any way and to try and rise above themselves and to somehow be better in this situation, somehow grow in this horrible, horrible situation. Let's try and grow a little bit. Let's try and accomplish something. Let's try and make some sense out of what is a horrible, terrible, senseless act. Um, I wish I could do more for my staff. There are people here that are uh, numb. There are people here that are de very depressed, as I'm sure there are all over the country. There are people here that are terribly, terribly saddened and lost. I wish I could do more. I wish I could say something to them. All I can say is that tonight we're going to start and we're going to try and make this little show, which has always been silly and unprofessional and largely inconsequential in the larger world, we're going to try and do one of these tonight, and then we'll try tomorrow, and then so on and so on. And so, let's begin. We're going to, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back from 60 Minutes, Steve Croft is going to come here. And one of the reasons that I'm very glad that he's here tonight is that he knows a lot about what's happened. He knows a lot about what's going on, and maybe... Uh, he can put some of our minds at ease. And so I'm very grateful to Steve Croft for being here. So let's take a break, and uh, we'll come back and, and get started. All right, thank you. Nice pants. 
things are amazing. Introducing Docker's mobile pen. Life by Lysol. Fact, cats don't come with breaks. Fact, no other wipes kills germs faster than Lysol sanitizing wipes. They kill 99.9% .9 of germs in seconds. Life demands Lysol. That's a fact. Now, experience the true intensity of color. Introducing Herbal Essences Hair Color, made with pure color extracts that saturate your hair for intense color like never before. Shine so brilliant, unbelievable color that holds on and won't let go. Got the urge? Oh, yeah. New Herbal Essences Hair Color from Clairol. A beauty all your own. Contact lens solutions have come a long way, but you still had to rub. Well, today, OptiFree has a solution so advanced, you don't need to rub. So switch to No Rub Express, the future of lens care. Just a new nutrition bar with 17 essential vitamins and minerals. It would be dumb to show you images like this. But since new Body Smarts tastes as good as it is, good's not such a dumb choice. Introducing delicious new Body Smarts. Sweet just got smart. Jesse, come on, let's join the downhill race. I heard that. Good morning. Good morning. Jesse, come on. Breakfast is getting cold. We have your daughter. Daddy. You have a patient. She has a six-digit number in her head. I need that number. You need your daughter back. Michael Douglas. Is it a telephone number? No. Is it a place? No. And they're going to kill her. What is it? No! Don't say a word. I'll never tell. Read it R. September 28th, only in theaters.